Hello everyone and welcome back to the multiplayer FPS tutorial series. Today we're just going to be working on some post-processing because in the next video we're going to be using it for our bullet effects. So the first thing we're going to have to do is go up to the window tab up here and click on it and then we're going to choose package manager. And in here we're going to make sure that we have the Unity Registry packages selected so that we can get all the Unity assets. And then we're going to search Post Process in the top right and it'll just pop up here Post Processing. So install that into your project. If you don't have it downloaded already you'll have to do that first. It's just the button right next to it. And once it's done installing we can see down here in our project view in the packages folder that it's been installed down here. So let's head on over to our game scene and get started. The first thing we're going to have to do is make a new empty game object and we're just going to press F2 and rename that to post processing. Then we're going to click on the layer and we're going to add a new layer and we're just going to call it post processing. Then back on our post processing object we are going to add a new component. We're going to add a post process volume which is just going to add post processing to our scene. Then we're going to make sure to check is global so that it affects every single post processing camera in our scene. Then let's make a new post processing folder in our project view and I'm just going to call this post processing. And then in this I'm going to right click and choose create and then we're going to add a post processing profile and you can name this whatever you want. Then we're going to go back onto our post processing object and drag in this profile into the profile slot. Then make sure that this post processing game object has the post processing layer. Alright, now let's go onto our main camera and add a new component. It's going to be the post process layer component. And just set that layer field to be the post processing layer we created. Then let's go back to our post processing game object and we can add an effect. We'll just start with a vignette. And I'll checkbox this intensity so that we can change it. And I'll set it to uh, some low value somewhere around 0 0.3. Now that that's done, we can add another effect. And this time we're going to add ambient occlusion, which is just going to add shadows in between where objects intersect. And it's going to help us separate out different objects a lot better. So I'll checkbox the intensity so I can change it. And you can mess around with this all you want. It doesn't really matter, just make it look how you like it. One thing to note is that the more properties you have checkboxed, the more performance it's gonna take. So only change the properties you really wanna change, and if you're not using a property, just leave the checkbox unchecked. Now that I've got that mostly how I want it, I'm gonna add a new effect, and this time we're gonna add Bloom, which makes everything reflect light, basically, and don't set this too high, you're gonna blind yourself. So I'll set it to something low, about 1, and that's all I need to do for that. Next I'll add some chromatic aberration, which is going to tint the corners of the screen orange and blue. And oftentimes I'll see people setting this super high in their games, and it doesn't look very good. So if you're going to use this effect, set it to something low. Now that we've set our post-processing how we want it, let's go over to our main camera and copy the post-process layer. So right click, copy component, and then let's go to our player controller prefab and just paste that component as new onto our camera object. Now that we've copied that over, we can go to our menu and start up a game. And if we create a room here, you can see that the post-processing is affecting the scene and it's just making everything look a little bit nicer and a little more polished. And I'm actually not really a fan of this ambient occlusion I've created here, so I can just click on the post-processing profile in my project view and change that how I want it, and it'll save for when the next time we play the game. I think I'll just use the multi-scale volumetric obscurance property for the mode. Now when we try this out, we're going to see that, wow, that's way too big, so I'm just going to turn down that intensity a little bit, and that's a lot better. So that's going to be the end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. You can tweak these values however you want to get it looking nice. Next time we will be adding in some bullet visuals. So I'll see you all then. As always, thank you to my patrons Mikels, Ojack Frost, Neil, Benzito, Biffinley, Dottie, Helix, Mycock, Orchidy, and XZippyZackX.